a lot of us grew up uh, kind of watching that each year. It's kind of like one of those stories like the Wizard of Oz. You just kind of had to, to watch every year growing up, that kind of thing. And um, that, that uh, movie was written in uh, 1964, that animation. And I'm sure um, I'm not quite that old, so uh, maybe some of you are, but I'm sure when it first came out, it was like, wow, that is an amazing animated show, right? But in 2017, we look at that and go, that is really bad, right? <laughs> That's a little goofy, but you, you guys know, you probably know the story, okay? Um, the story goes, uh, Sam the Snowman, uh, Sam the Snowman's kind of the narrator, and the uh, story goes that uh, this guy here that you all know as Rudolph uh, is the, uh, the son of the lead reindeer of Santa's reindeer, Donner, and he's born with this uh, gift, and uh, he doesn't think it's a blessing, uh, he thinks that he's a misfit, all right, because all, we all know that his nose glows red, all right? So he takes off and uh, runs away from home because he was tired of getting made fun of, and he runs across um, this elf by the name of Hermie, and then another friend, um, Yukon Cornelius, and Yukon Cornelius is uh, kind of a prospector, and they go on this journey looking for gold and silver, or silver and gold. Yeah, silver and gold, gold or whatever. Uh, but they end up on this island uh, of misfit toys run by this winged lion that you can kind of see. Which, by the way, when I was kind of looking at this, uh, I was thinking, he looks a lot like a, maybe the Lion of Judah, okay? And he's kind of uh, judging, to, you know, everybody and what's going on there, which kind of relates a little bit what I'm going to be talking about today. But what he does is he flies all over the world and he looks for those toys, those misfit toys that have been thrown away. And he takes those toys, or you could say those gifts, and he takes them out of where they're not being used, takes them back to this island with the hope that maybe sometime that uh, these gifts can be reused by somebody else. Okay, you know the story. Um, how about your house? You got any misfit gifts sitting around your house from, from Christmas, the Christmas past? Okay, you, you, I think everybody, don't, don't you have that island or those islands at your house that uh, those gifts kind of just sit there, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's your clothes closet, right? That, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I think I still got a shirt from a couple Christmases ago that's still in the package sitting there. It's, it's that shirt that uh, uh, you got and you're kind of going, I don't know, or, or maybe, maybe it's that shirt or pants that you tried like one time, um, kind of like my, my maroon uh, jeans that I got made fun of so much, all right? And they just kind of sit in my closet now. Um, or, or maybe uh, it's your kids. Anybody have kids with a few misfit toys? Okay, they, they've got an island. Okay, and I brought one of my islands right here as, of misfit toys. As a matter of fact, we've got three of these, and they, they don't even come close to keeping all the, the toys in here. And as I was thinking about this, I was kind of digging through these things, and this is Brody stuff, and he's got these things, and yeah, he uses this. He's got, yeah, the old uh, Iron Man mask, and he's got some uh, G.I. Joe figures here, that kind of thing. And as I was digging through here, I, I, I got all the way to the bottom here, and this is, this is usually where the Misfit toys are at, at the bottom, right? Okay, and I, I dig all the way in here, I'm going... That's a misfit toy right there. Anybody seen one of these before? My boys, they had to have this thing, all right? And it, it's something I think you put on the ground, okay, and it's supposed to stand up. And you got the remote, and it should go all over the place. And you know what? I think they played with it like one or two times. Probably lost the remote now, okay? Uh, you, can't, you can't have this toy, this gift, without the remote. So it's, it's basically a misfit toy. So guess what? It gets thrown in the island of misfit toys. And I think if you go to any household, I think you have those places where those gifts are, are thrown away. They're never used. Um, and you know what? Have you ever... Have you ever got a misfit gift and you don't know what to do with it when you get it? Isn't that a little awkward? I mean, you're, you're sitting, sitting by the tree, sitting down, and somebody gives you the gifts and that kind of stuff, and you're shaking, you're all excited, you know what I'm talking about. You rip it open, and you're like, internally you're thinking, what in the world is this? <laughs> huh, anybody? You know what I'm talking about? And you don't know what to do, so you kind of get that cheesy smile on your face. Thank you. What is it, you know? And, and you're, you're so concerned that you don't want to offend anyone. 
So you, you kind of keep that cheesy smile on your face. You're scared to ask for that receipt because you know you want to return it, right? And you're like, good grief, what in the world is this? You want to return it, but you don't want to offend anybody, so you don't. So you take this thing home. You don't have the receipt for it. What do I do with this thing? So you put it somewhere for next year's garage sale. You know what I'm talking about? Or maybe you put it somewhere. We've got storage in our house that someday if we ever move, we're going to see all this stuff and go, oh, that's where that thing went, you know? The island of misfit gifts. Um, How about the flip side of that? Have you ever given a gift that ended up being a misfit gift? All right, you give something to someone and you know it's useful for them. You, you know, hey, you need this gift, right? And they don't really think so and you can kind of see it on their face because now you're on the receiving end of, thank you, that kind of thing. <laughs> and, and you look at them going, don't, don't you get it? Okay, this is a great gift. But let me explain it a little bit to you. All right, so you have these gifts you give. Uh, I, last year, my son plays baseball and every year we have to get him new baseball bats because the kid kind of grows once in a while. And uh, so this, and you don't understand baseball very well, there's, there's different weights of bats, okay? So um, this is called a drop eight, so it's a pretty light bat. And uh, Braden uh, wanted the, the drop eight Louisville, Louisville Slugger, so we asked my parents to get in this, and pretty expensive bat right here. And, uh, but... I know that this year he's going to play, if, if he so chooses, I'm not trying to force him, Braden, where are you? You better know, but anyway, um, spent a lot of time on this thing, but anyway, uh, if he chooses to play uh, high school baseball, he has to go to a bat now called a drop three, a BB core, which is a pretty heavy bat. So this is a, a drop eight, then you got a drop five, and then the next one is the drop three that all high school and college players have to play with, okay? So anyway, I'm trying to get somewhere quick here with this, but he gets this bat, and I'm thinking, you cannot be swinging a drop eight when you're going to be swinging a drop three next year. You've got to start getting down to where you can swing a little bit heavier bat. Now we've got a batting cage in our backyard. So about every morning when it's nice out, we go back there. That has been probably one of the the greatest um, relational things for me and Brayden, but it's probably been one of the most trial things of trials with our relationship as well. Okay, so my, my wife will vouch that about every single morning we come in and he's yelling at me, I'm yelling at him going, you know, Dad, why did you keep throwing those pitches, that kind of thing? And, and I'm going, why didn't you swing that at the bat? You know, and it's, it's just a constant thing going on between us. But that was a struggle between this bat and this bat this year because we would, he would go to the games, he'd swing this bat, we'd get in the batting cage and say, just put that light bat down, swing with the drop five, all right? And he didn't want to do it, all right? And what I'm trying to tell you is this was a gift that was a misfit gift, all right, and by the way, they're not cheap, okay? So I'm looking at this gift, and, and, and this was like a year-old model, but it was still like a $200 bat. So I'm thinking, well, yeah, bats can get pretty expensive. Uh, but um, I'm looking at this bat, and I'm thinking, good grief, if you're not going to use it, I'm going to take it out of your bag, and I, I'm just going to give it to somebody else. You know, matter of fact, I'm looking at this going, can I buff this off and maybe send it back? I don't know, but... <laughs> I mean, that's thought that was going through my mind because, you, you know, you're going, I've, I've given you a very useful gift and I'm not really getting why you're not using it, okay? Um, I see the value in this, okay? I, I know it can be useful for him. And you don't give a gift to somebody just to have somebody recognize and go, hey, thanks for the bat, that kind of thing. Don't you, you give a gift to somebody because you want it to be used. You want it to be useful, You want it to bless somebody. You want it to develop somebody. You want something in that gift that people are going to be, uh, have some value for. Um, This is the first point I want to make here today, okay? I want everybody to understand this, okay? First point when we're talking about this, God's given everybody here a gift, okay? Every single one of you, let me put this bat down because I'm shaking it at you. (laughs) Every one of you, listen, you know, (laughs) hear me. (laughs) But listen, every one of you has been given a gift of God. Every single one of you. And I've run across a lot of people who are going, you know, I'm not really gift. No. If you know Jesus Christ, I'm telling you right now, God has given you a gift. Okay. He has given you ability that you are called to use. Okay. Um, And this gift 
First of all, is the best Christmas gift that you've ever, you've ever gotten. You think some of these, some of the gifts that you get at Christmas are good. I want you to know the first and the best Christmas gift that you ever have is what God has given you. And of course, going into this whole time of the year uh, when God gave his only begotten son, right? Uh, laying in a manger, um, prophesied uh, over 300 times that he was going to come. By the way, you want to build your faith up. Okay, you want to know that God, that Jesus Christ is really God. First of all, come to the conclusion that God, or Jesus Christ really walked upon this earth. Okay, from an archeological standpoint, absolutely there was a man by the name of Jesus of Nazareth that no shadow of a doubt walked upon this earth. Okay, the other thing, if you want a good study, is study the prophecies that he fulfilled. Because you'll come, come to the conclusion that there's over 300 prophecies that he fulfilled. And I want you to know that it is literally impossible for somebody to fulfill, from a probability standpoint, all those prophecies in, in the lifespan of one person. Impossible, okay? Unless, unless you're God, all right? The first prophecy I want to take a look at here is Isaiah 9, 6, as we go into scripture here. And it says this, it says, for unto us a child is born. First of all, this is talking about his humanity. And then it says, unto us a son is given. Okay, that's talking about his divinity. So something is given to you. Okay, you are given something by God. Now, he goes in now further on this prophecy here, and he explains uh, the details of the gift. You ever get a gift and you're like, hey, that's pretty cool. And you start reading the instructions and you're, it gets cooler and cooler as you read it. You know, maybe, maybe it's a smartphone or, or something like, I don't know what it might be, but you start to read the instructions going, wow, I didn't know it did that. I didn't know it did. Well, that's really cool. That kind of thing. This is kind of what God is doing. Say, hey, I'm, I've given you a son. I'm, I'm giving you my son, but now let me explain what that gift is all about. And he goes on here and he gives some qualities here and he says, and his name will be called wonderful counselor. Now in some uh, interpretations, this word is separated from this word. I don't really care, okay? He is wonderful or he is a wonderful counselor. However you want to look at it, he is wonderful, okay? And he gives wonderful advice. So if you ever need counseling advice, he is the first person you go to. He's also mighty God. Matter of fact, this word mighty is talking, it's a, it's a word that uh, you can translate hero. He is a hero God. You can look to him as your hero, but he is also the almighty God. There is not a problem that he can't handle for you. He is an everlasting father he is, he is a father that, that is outside of time. We talked about this a little bit on Wednesday in our study of Ephesians that I'd love to have everybody come to, all right? And uh, so we're talking about how he somehow, and this blows your mind because we are so encapsulated in this whole idea of being in time. Well, God is at a time that he can see the past uh, to the, uh, the past to the future all in one snapshot. How that works, I ain't got a clue. All right, but he is an everlasting father and he is a father, meaning that he has a great desire for you like a good father would. And it says that he is also the Prince of Peace. Okay, what, what's that mean? Prince of Peace, this is the word shalom. Shalom is, is, is not just a word that is a greeting like we say hi. To, to those that really know what shalom means, shalom actually means that I want to see you blessed in all ways, okay, a wholeness. We talk about uh, our, our purpose statement here at Lifehouse Church, and the purpose statement is to maximize the potential of each person's spirit, soul, and body, which goes along with First, uh, first Thessalonians 5.23. And that's what God wants for you. He is a God that is the Prince of Peace, meaning that he wants you to be blessed in every way, not just spiritually, but he wants you to be blessed in your mind. He wants your body to be blessed. In all ways, he wants you to be, to be blessed. And that's what it means when it's talking about the Prince of Peace, that he is the, the, the God that wants to bless you in every, uh, every circumstance, every way. Um, you all know this scripture, John three sixteen. still talking about gifts here. For God so loved the world that he gave. Okay, see that, that he has given you something. All right, there's something amazing, a great gift that he's given you. And we see what, it, what that is, his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
Romans 6, 23 goes on here and it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift, okay, this is a gift that you've been given. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, okay? Now, a lot of you are looking at going, okay, okay, I get it. I've heard that before, okay? That's, that's Christianity 101. I know. But don't we need sometimes to be reminded of the gift that we're given? The things that we just sometimes take for granted um, I, I don't know how it is in your household, but sometimes I've got to remind my kids what they've been given. Uh, sometimes uh, I think of my son Brody, and um, he'll be upstairs in his room and getting ticked off at his brother. And from the downstairs, two flights of stairs, I hear this, get out of my room, Brayden! Okay, this, this squawking kind of scream that has irritated me since he was one, okay? <laughs> And I got to run upstairs and say, stop, okay? Stop your yelling, please. It's giving me a splitting headache, all right? But let me remind you, because I heard you say, get out of my room, that it really isn't your room, okay? Until you start paying the bills, this is my room, <laughs> right? I allow you to sleep in here. Okay, man, you guys are really enjoying this, okay? And if you don't like it that it is not your room, but my room, I will escort you out of the house and show you your room on the front porch, okay? So get the picture that it is my house and I allow you to be here. Think about the blessings that I have given to you, okay? Not only the house you live in, but think about the rides that you get to school. And then I remind them when I was a kid, I went to school, uphill both ways, and I did. I lived on the other side of the overpass to the high school, so I had to go up and down the overpass, all right? And I, very poor, had no shoes. Okay, you, know the, you know the situation. And back then was when it was really cold out and it, it was blizzarding every day. In my feet, in my bare feet, and there was a lot of sandburrs in my feet. A couple times got caught in a blizzard. Didn't make it home all night. Had to stay underneath the, the overpass, okay? <laughs> Let me remind you kids that that's how I lived, okay? And you get to ride to school in a very warm car every single day. And by the way, that food you eat, okay? That's not your food. That's my food I've given to you, all right? So think about the blessings because again, you kids forget, right? And I think God looks at us sometimes and says, think about the blessings. Because sometimes you guys forget even the, the most common one and that's, I've given you salvation. I've given you grace. And we just kind of forget about those things once in a while. So God has given us a gift, his son Jesus, Romans 6, 23. Let me explain this word gift for just a moment here before we move on. This word gift is, in the Greek, it's a word charisma. You might've heard that word before. When you uh, actually uh, dwindle it down to the root word, it's the word chariz. And chariz actually means grace. So when we talk about the gift of God, it's talking about the grace of God. Okay, so when we take a look at grace, what I, I don't want people to do is get grace mixed up with mercy. Okay, they're, they're two different things. See, mercy is something that God withholds from you. What's he withhold from you? He withholds judgment from you. Okay, that, that's what mercy is. So mercy is something that's been withhold, held. Um, grace is something that has been given. Okay, grace is not something that has been withheld, held, but grace is a blessing that's been given to you. Grace is undeserved favor. Here's what grace is. You want to know what grace is? Grace is the knowledge that God gives to your spirit, his spirit to your spirit. Okay, and when he gives you that knowledge of who he is or what his plan is, what grace does in your life is it, um, it gives, it causes, let me say, it causes a reaction within you to do the will of God. That, that's what grace is. Everything that you do in righteousness for God is a gift that he has placed within you. It's a gift of grace that he has given to you. Grace is what empowers you to overcome. Grace is the supernatural desire to live in righteousness. It's by grace that you have been saved, Ephesians 2.8. Get the picture, okay? It's God that has given you the idea about how you can be saved 
And once you have that grace that is within your spirit, that causes a reaction, which is faith that you would choose to repent. Without grace, without that gift, you would never repent. Therefore, you would go to hell. That's why it's by grace. It's the gift of God. Everything begins with grace, God giving you grace. Okay, so the gift of grace means undeserved forgiveness. But here's also what this gift is talking about here. The gift of grace gives you access to the supernatural abilities that God wants to place within you. And by the way, these abilities, these gifts, these talents that he wants to place within you are not yours. Okay, they're, they're his gifts, they're spiritual gifts, they're, they're gifts of the Holy Spirit, but he is working through you. So you have spiritual gifts, unique gifts that God is placing within you. Romans 12, four, let me jump in here. Start making a case here for this. Uh, it says, for as we have many members in one body, okay, so there's many members here making up one body, but all the members do not have the same function, all right? So every person here has a special place within this body to do something special, okay? I was telling the worship team before this as we were coming out, I said, this, it's a real, the grace is so amazing because it's not like God um, just looked at this world and said, okay, I'm gonna bless this world and he just kind of threw out this corporate thing. But I think that as I'm reading this stuff, he looked at every single person here individually, and get this, the God of the universe that created this amazing universe, not just this world, this huge universe, we can't even comprehend how big this is, but yet he, I believe, looked at every individual person. He knew you before he even put you in the womb. He had a purpose for you individually, and he looked at you and says, Brian, I've got a special purpose for you. There is a special form of grace that I'm gonna give to you that's different than Deb that's different than Clayton, that's different than anybody else here, and I'm giving it to you because I've got a special function for you within the body. Every single person I believe that God has looked at and said, I know you, I love you, I'm putting you upon this earth, I'm going to bless you, I'm gonna cause favor to come upon you, I'm gonna supply my grace upon you, and that's what it's showing here. We do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Okay, so we see this, that he's given you gifts according to this grace, according to this favor. Okay, so he is supplying this gift or this grace to you. And then it goes on here and it says, let us use them. And that's really where I'm going with this whole idea today that you have been gifted. God has an individual, unique set of grace that he has given to every single person here that he knew you before he put you in the womb. And he says, I'm going to place you upon this earth. I'm gonna give you this grace. I'm gonna give you this ability. And now that I've given you this gift, I don't want it to be a misfit gift and you just toss it in some island of misfit gifts. But what I want for you is to take that and I want you to use it because I'm putting you together in this body. And for this body to work, all things have to come together. Every unique gift has to come together. You've got to get your gifts out of that island of misfit gifts and you've got to begin to use it. And that's what he says here. He says, use them. And then he gives some examples here. He says, if prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith, okay? Prophecy is is declaring the truth. Or ministry, let us use it to, in ministering, okay? This is, this is declaring the truth. Ministry is, is doing the truth. Goes on here and it says, and he who teaches in teaching, okay? So it's, it's once again teaching the truth, okay? It's those people that have the ability to persuade people to, to, to make a change in their life, okay? That's one gift he's given. And it goes on here and it says, he who exhorts an exhortation. So that's talking about, you know, those people that God puts a word on you for somebody specifically and says, Laura, God told me this and you've got to change this in your life or whatever it is. That's exhortation. It's declaring the truth. And he who gives with liber, liberality, I hate that word, can't say that word, whatever, okay. 
My translation I use to read is who gives liberally, okay, or generously, all right? So I um, use the King James Version in there for, so it puts these fun words in there, okay? All right? But again, if you are called to give, that's how you're, that, that, that's, that's what you do. That, that's your unique gift that God has given to you that I have a desire in my heart to give, to give generously. Why? In order to advance the truth of the kingdom of God. And it goes on here and it says, with diligence, or he who leads with diligence. Okay, that's talking about God has placed upon some of you administration that some people give financially, generously, and then those who lead take those resources and figure out how to structure it. And and, and so that truth can be expanded. So there's another way that God can, can... put grace upon you. And then it goes on here and says, and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So in this way it's saying, then you show mercy by your kindness. You show the truth by your kindness. So these are different things that God is saying, I can grace this body with all these different unique gifts. That's point one is I want you to know every single person here. And when I'm saying each person here, I'm talking to you individually. Let me say this. God is speaking through me to you saying, you are gifted. And if you're sitting there right now going, well, I'm not. No, I'm talking about you. If you know Jesus Christ, there is a gift that's within you that he has graced you because he wants to use you. So point two, you have unique gifts. Okay, again, it's not just a specific or a a general gift, but there is a unique gift that he has for you. When I uh, go out and buy gifts for my my two boys, I don't know about you, but I'm sure it's the case in every household. My two boys are so different, all right? Brayden, I tell you what, Brayden is so much like me when I was growing up. Probably ask my parents, they'd probably say the same thing. Extremely sports-minded, everything is, is geared towards sports, uh, when I buy him a gift, again, baseball bats and basketball, basketball shoes, um, all things are, are geared towards sports. Now, if I went out and I said, okay, I'm going to buy Brody uh, something like that, because Braden is his big brother, he might go, oh, that's fun, that kind of thing, but you'd never see him use it. Okay, Brody is different. What Brody wants is things that he can build with his hands. Okay, I, I look at Brody sometimes, I go, are you my child? Because, man, I'm so bad at that. All right, so, but he wants like things like Legos and um, he likes, I mean, action figure stuff. And, and uh, I've always told Brody, I said, because I don't know what other word to use, but I say, you are the best player I have ever seen in my life. Okay, I don't know what you're going to do when you get older, but you really know how to play well, okay? So I don't know, maybe he'll work for Mattel or something and develop toys or something when he gets older. But, but uh, my point is this, that I can't go out and just generally buy gifts for my two boys um, just saying one, fits, one size fits all, because it doesn't, okay? They, the, the two are completely different. And this is how you are within the body of Christ. You are different than the person that you're sitting next to. And God just doesn't look at you generally and say, I'm giving you just a general amount of grace, but he looks at you specifically and says, I designed you, I know you, and I know the type of grace or the gift that I need to give to you. And he places you in this body And he supplies you with this unique grace. And he says, I'm giving you this gift because I want you to use it for this body. Okay, get get this, okay? God gives you gifts in order to expand his truth. But God gives you more gifts as you expand your ability. Did you get that? Let me say that again. God gives you gifts to use to expand his truth but God will give you more gifts. Anybody here want more gifts? Anybody here want to be used more by God? Okay, this is is a solution here to that. Okay, if you want to be used more by God, God will give you grace in order to expand his truth. But if you want more from God, God gives you more gifts as you expand or you develop your abilities. Okay, Um, let me just show you a scripture here, a parable here that... You probably know Matthew 25, 14. Jesus here is giving uh, teaching here on what I'm just talking about. He says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. 
Okay, so this is talking about God really coming to this earth and he's, he's traveling to a far country and he's giving his gifts to you. Okay, this, this is what it's about here. And it goes on and it says, and to one he gave five talents, to one he gave two, and to another one, um, to another one, each according to his own ability, to his own ability, and immediately he went off on a journey. Now, you might look at this and go, okay, that, that doesn't seem fair, God. Why would you give five to that person? I mean, I, I want five, okay? I mean, I don't want one. What's, what's the reason why one got five and one got one? And here is why they have different amounts because it was giving according to the grace that these people had received and the level of trust that God had in their ability. Okay, he supplies the grace, the gift. He expects you to use it as you use it. Okay, you build up that trust in God and say, okay, you took care of that one. Now I'm going to give you more because you proved to me that you can take care of that one. See, this is what I believe in this, this thing that, that's not written here. I believe that one that was given five, hey, he gave him five talents. I believe that he started with one. I think he did. I, I think he probably started with one. And because he used it and because he proved that, you know what, you can be trusted. Here, let me give you two. And after he proved it with two, here, let me give you three. And he worked his way up to, to, to five talents, okay? But, but the story, as you read into it, goes on because there, there's one with the one here. And as the story goes on, this one took that one talent and he fails to use it. And God says, okay, you failed to use it. I can't trust you anymore. I'm gonna take that talent, that gift, and I'm just gonna give it to somebody else. So if you want to be used by God, you've got to use those abilities, those talents that God has given to you. Um, my story is this. Uh, when I decided 20, I don't know, three years ago or whatever to submit my life to Christ, it's not like the next day I just stood up on a stage and just began to pastor and teach and all that kind of stuff. Here's, here, here's what happened, okay? When I came to Christ 20-some years ago, um, I was at a church... And uh, God says, okay, this is what I want you to do. See that little short blonde back there? Okay, I, I want you to, to go and I want you to help her. Okay, I just want you uh, to go and help her. And, and the first five, six, seven years of, uh, of my Christian life, I helped this blonde lady run around and do children's ministry. Okay, um, there was a point as I was helping her um, that she decided that she wanted a permanent slave, all right? So she said, um, why don't we get married, okay? And um, I was enslaved from that point, okay? And here's, here's what I want you to know, though. Be before anything ever happened to where I would help people, I would lead people, uh, pastor, teach, whatever. Um, I was behind the scenes in children's ministry that, by the way, probably wasn't my, my first ability. Um, I, I'm not like this, uh, you know, I, I'm just not that great with kids. I'm just not, okay? It's just, it's just not, but, but you, here's the deal. God didn't ask me, are you good with kids? He just said, that woman right there, you go help her, okay? And just shut your mouth. I know it's gonna be a pain, all right? And children's ministry can be sometimes. It's a lot of work. I just want you to help her. Okay, to the point where this, okay, Paige, obviously I'm talking about my wife, Paige, she was um, uh, part of the Assemblies of God for a long time. And she was the statewide camp director. So she was known by um, all the state pastors and stuff because they would come and help her, that kind of thing. I would go to these, uh, these conventions or go to kids camp to help her, that kind of thing. Um, this is what I was known for, okay? They didn't know who I was, but they knew Paige. So my name was Mr. Pastor Paige. <laughs> it's humbling, okay? Especially when you're an alpha male. And you're named after your wife, okay? 
I'm telling you, that, that's how it was for the first five to seven years of our marriage in ministry that I didn't have an identity. I was known for what my wife did. Okay, even when we moved to Omaha and I went to, to, to Bible school, she was on staff at a very large church there. And uh, I would come in the church and they'd go, who are you? Oh, oh you're, you're the husband of, of Pastor Page. Okay. But here, here's the, what I want you to see here. All right. I, inside, I probably complained about that. But you know what? I just got busy and just did it. I just lived by faith in what God said. I want you to do this for now. You just do it. And that, you know what? That's what I did. I just did it. I was faithful. And what happened is God began to grow the talents in my life. And even though for the rest of my life, I'll be enslaved by Pastor Page. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, in some areas, not all yet, and I'm still a work in progress, okay, in some areas, God increased that ability in my life. And it was, I was able then to start doing things like teaching, those kind of things. But it didn't come, guys, until I was faithful with the things that are more behind the scene. And God says, matter of fact, let me tell you this, okay, not everybody here is called to stand up on the stage and, and do what I'm doing, okay? This is not the pinnacle of ministry, <laughs> Matter of fact, if you look at scripture, probably the pinnacle of ministry is those people that work behind the scenes because their reward is going to be probably a lot greater than what I ever do up here. Scripture talks about that. Okay, what I'm trying to tell you though is people, God has gifted you. Be faithful with that gift. And when you're faithful with that gift, God will begin to trust you and he will begin to increase the abilities in your life and he'll begin to use you more. Um, each believer has been given grace, okay? You're spiritually gifted by God in a unique area. And the reason why God gifts you isn't for yourself. Okay, you guys still with me? Okay, look, look, I still got 12 minutes, all right? 24, okay, all right, all right. I'll take that, all right, no, I won't. I'll try to get you out here. I'm, I'm starting to wind it down. But what I want you to see here, everyone, all right, is God has gifted you not for yourself, but he's gifted you in order that you can profit the entire body. That's why you're sitting in these seats right now, okay? I, yeah, I'm doing my part right now. I'm, I'm teaching. Hopefully, you're, you're getting something out of this. Hopefully, it's challenging your life. But you sitting here right now isn't the ultimate purpose of why you're here right now. Your ultimate purpose is God has given you a gift. Use it. And use it in order that it would profit this entire body. It says here in 1 Corinthians 12, 4. It says there are diversities in gifts. Okay, here it is right here, guys. Okay, not everybody is called to do the same thing. It's diverse. God has looked at you individually and says, that's what I have for your life right now. And, and by the way, it can change just like it did with me. Okay, I, I'm not in the back area doing children's ministry so much anymore. Well, sometimes I am. But um, God has moved me in into different directions. Okay, so there's diversities of gifts and, and your gift that you have right now might not be the gift in two years. I don't know, but you know what? The diversity that God has called you to do right now, just do it. Just do it. So there's diversities of gifts, but there's the same spirit. There's, there are differences of ministries. That's doing things, but the same Lord and there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. I think it does. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. That, that's what it's for. That, that's why you're here is to profit one another. It's not for yourself. You, you are called to be like Christ. Christ came not to be served, but to serve everybody else. That's why you're here. God wants you here because there is somebody here that God wants you to serve and he has given you grace, a unique type of grace that you can be a benefit to somebody else. Verse 11, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. You've been given grace. Not just a corporate type of grace, but an individual grace that God has looked upon you and says, yes, you and you and you, okay? There's an, an, an individual thing that I want you to do. Find it and do it. 
Point three, and this is the last point as we're starting to land this airplane here. God's desire for you is to use his gifts. Okay, as I mentioned before, when we give gifts to somebody, what we want is for somebody to take that gift and make it usable for their life. We don't want somebody to throw it in the, in the, the, the island of misfit toys. That is not what we want. We want somebody to use our gifts. And let me just tell you here, as I switch to the spiritual, God is the same way. God has gifted you. And let me say this as well. The gift that he's given to you, that grace, is not cheap grace. He did not go down to the dollar store and buy that gift for you. That gift was purchased with an enormous price. The price of his, the, the death of his son. That's the gift that he's given to you. Grace was purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. So why do we think that it doesn't hurt God when he gives us the gift and it says he does give a gift, gift to each one? Why do we think that it's not a big deal if we go, I ain't gonna use it? It was purchased by the blood of his son. Let me tell you what, if I had to give up Braden or Brody for one of you to keep your life in life support, you know one thing I would expect? And by the way, I'm not to that level of love, love yet. I, that would be such a hard thing but God has done that for you. But if, if I had to give my Braden, my firstborn son, if I had to give him in order that you stay alive, you know one thing I would want from you is that you respect the gift. Why do you think God is any different? God has specially graced you with a gift that was purchased by his son. And he would say, what I want from you is to use it. I gave my son for you to use that gift. And I've been thinking about that, just thinking, we allow so many trivial, fleshly, earthly treasure things in our life to say, you know what, God, I can't, I can't use that gift right now. Or God, I'm, I'm fearful to use that gift right now or whatever. I just wonder what that does as I'm just even just standing on the stage thinking about that right now, thinking, what does that do to God? Thinking, hey, grief, I gave my son up for that, for you to be able to walk in that gift. And you, you want to put that thing, that trivial thing that has really no value that will be in something like this, and you want to put that before the gift that I've paid by with my son's life. I'm being introspective here because I truly am thinking about that right now. I hope you are as well. How precious the, the gift that he has given to you is. It's not cheap, his grace. Let me finish off here with this Matthew 25. This is talking about the one with one talent that as I was just talking about, just kind of threw his gift away. And he says, I was afraid and I went and I hid your talent in the, in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown. I, I highlighted these things here because he's saying, saying I'm reaping where, where I did not sow and I, I gather where I've not scattered seed. And, and really what he's saying here is, this is what you should have done. I've gifted you. I've given you a talent to, to go do these things. And I, you knew I was going to come back and I, I wanted to reap the harvest right there where I've, that talent that I've called you to do and, and, and you didn't do that. And I, I went to, to get that harvest and there's nothing there. It goes on here. So you ought, have, ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has more, more will be given and he will have abundance, but from him who does not, and I just want to highlight, who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. In the early stages of uh, your faith development, 
um, when you look at your life and say, you know what, I'm kind of that one talent guy, I want you to take heed of what's going on here. If you're not sure of what your ability is to serve within the body of Christ, I'm telling you, come and find me, Sean, a leader here. My, you know what my, my calling is here as a pastor? It's not to stand up on the stage. This is, this is teaching. You know what a pastor is to do? To equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And if you don't know what you're equipped to do, come and find me and we will try to figure something out. But what I'm, what I'm wanting you to do is do something. Do something. Okay, don't just make it all right to come and sit in the, the, the seats and, and listen to me rattle every single week, okay? That, that, listen to me. I'm not that good. I admit that, okay? That is not, that's not the way to be fulfilled in life. You're not going to walk out here. I assure you, you're not going to walk out here and go, whoo, my life is so great now. You're not. When you start doing what God has called you to do, gifted you to do, that's when you're going to start walking around going, my life is so blessed, so fulfilled. And that's what I want for you. That's what God, the everlasting father wants for you. He wants to bless you in all ways. And the way that happens is through you understanding where you are gifted at, that you begin to live in obedience. And as you begin to live in obedience, that's where the blessings of God begin to be absorbed in your life. Begins with grace, goes through obedience or faith, and the blessings take place. That's how it happens. That's how the fulfillment happens. That's what I desire for your life. That's what God desires for your life. And we've got to figure out in your specific life, what does God want you to do? What has God graced you in diversity of gifts, gifts to do for this body, for the profit of all? But here's the problem, and just about ready to close here. here here's the problem. <clears throat> According to this parable here, that if you are one of those people that limiting your gifts and saying, eh, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a new Christian or I've kind of struggled through my life and I don't have much to offer and everything. What it's showing here is it's that person that is in danger of saying, I'm just not going to do anything. And I want you to heed this for just a moment here and understand that we are not to neglect God's grace because if you neglect God's grace, your ability will evaporate from you because you refuse to develop the gift of God in your life. I'm being a voice today like Paul was to Timothy. Okay, as we begin to close here, Paul looked at Timothy. Tim Paul was like Timothy's spiritual father. You guys with me? He was like his pastor. And Paul looked at Timothy, and this is in 1 Timothy 4, and he knew that Paul, or knew that Timothy had the gift of God within him. And I, again, you know what? I'm looking at every single one of you. And if you know Jesus Christ, and some of you I know, some of you I really don't know, but if you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, I'm looking at you right now and I'm saying, there is a gift of God within inside of you, every single one of you. And this is what Paul did with Timothy. He looked at Timothy and says, I know there's a gift inside of you. I laid my hands upon you. I know, Timothy, that you have the gift of leadership. And Timothy was being timid. He was shrinking back. And this is where Paul says in 1 Timothy 4, 14, he says, do not, Timothy, neglect the gift that is in you, which was given you by the prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership. This word neglect, and I want you to see this, this word neglect is this word emilio, and it means disregard, make light of, be careless. It means to pay no attention, to ignore, or to put away. Timothy had a gift God had placed within him. And what he did is he took it off and he put it away. And Paul's looking at that and saying, what a waste. What a waste. Timothy, wake up. Quit neglecting that gift. Don't put that gift, again, in that island of misfit gifts. Pull that thing back out. And then he goes on here in the second letter to Timothy. And this is what he said in 2 Timothy 1.5. It says, I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm calling every single person here and saying, remember the faith that you have. And in that faith, God has given you a gift, every one of you. And this is what he's saying here. I'm calling you to remember that. 
And in verse 6, he says, therefore, I remind you, stir up the gift. Stir it up, Lifehouse. Quit shrinking back. Don't be timid. And that's what he goes on here. And he says, stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power, of love, and a sound mind. You have the gift of God within you. God has given you grace. Quit having fear, but use the gift of God. Another word that he's talking about here when he's saying stir it up is fan the fire. When that fire starts to go out, you know, at a bonfire, you get down there and you blow on it and everything and the fire builds back up. This is what he's saying to do. That gift that's inside of you, that's beginning to, to trickle down, he's saying, wave, wave oxygen on it. Build that thing back up. Don't let that thing die. God wants you to reach your maximum spiritual potential. That is his desire for you. The gift of God is in every single one of you. The grace is given to you. The diversity of gifts, the uniqueness, every one of you has a part to play in this whole thing. And the final scripture, 1 Timothy 4.10, and this kind of sums everything up. It says, as each one of you has received a gift, that's that word charisma. It means divine grace. That's what the gift is that God has spoken to your spirit. He has. You know he has. And he has given you grace or that spiritual desire. And sometimes we've got that desire that we just pound the table and tears come out of our eyes. Okay, that is the grace. Okay, that is what God wants you to do. And maybe it's not that strong, but still you know that that's inside of you. And it's saying that because, he is, because you have received the, uh, gra- or the gift of, of grace, then he says, minister. And what that means is then take action. Minister it to one another. So again, it's not for you. It's for this body as good stewards. And by the way, this word stewards doesn't mean that you even own it. You're a manager of it. You're not even an owner of it. But he has given it to you in order to use for this body of the manifold or the various grace of God. So every one of you, again, has an individual gift that you're called to stir up, to fan that flame. So the question as we close here, are you using your ministry gift right now? Or have you buried it into a place like this, into the island of misfit toys? I don't know what your gift is here. And I've got some different things here. Maybe when we talk about missions, maybe you're like, yeah, man, I really care about, you know, maybe what Luke's doing or something, um, or maybe overseas or something like that. And I, I would really, I would really like to, to help Luke out. But you know what, I'm just so busy, I've got so much going on, yeah. So I'll just throw it in there. Okay, maybe it's outreach. I've just got a hunger to go out and to share the gospel. Well, I don't have time. And you start to throw these things. Helps ministry that, you know what? I just feel like, like when I was first saved and, and God says, go help that blonde, okay, back there, okay? That was helps ministry. Nobody's gonna know that you're even doing anything, but you know what? I just am filled called to do, to, to do that. But you know what? Brett, you know what's going on right now? The conference is going on right now. Scott Frost is being put in play right now. We've got to get out of here. I can't stick around and help, man. I got to get home because I got to see how much they're paying that boy. You can put whatever thing in your life that you want, but you know what? I I, I can't do that. I've got too much going on. Um, Visitation, I really need to go see that person in the hospital, but uh, I've got this going on. Pastor, you know what? Some of you right now are called to do what I'm doing. But you're scared. I I believe that there is people here that could plant churches right now that that could come out of this place. But you know what? Man, that would would interfere with my checkbook. You know what? Yeah, I will. But that really doesn't matter. But you know what? I I just can't do that, God. So you throw it in here. Um, Oops, I passed. Oh, I got two pastorings. Okay, so there's two of you in here. Diversity of gifts, but there, there might be, okay, anyway. Uh, hospitality. You know, you, you might be called to, to lead a life group at your home. 
and you're just a hospitable person. You've got a nice home, and you, but you, you know what? I, that means I'd have to clean once a week, so I can't. Sorry, God. Teaching. Oh, man, I, you got that calling to teach, but public speaking, going, you know what? I freak out every time I come up here. I've done this for 10 years, and every time I, I come up here, I'm, you know why I'm praying over there? I'm praying, God, I'm going to be an idiot up there if you don't help, okay? Some of you are called to teach, but you know what? I just, I, I'm just too scared to do that. Don't have time to do it. I mean, we, we can just go through this. Counseling, um, administration, um, helping with, with, with finances and structure, uh, music, singing, all right? Um, we've got, oh, there's technical, okay? So running back, uh, the, the PowerPoint back there. There's all these things that are going on. Children's ministry, by the way, okay? Don't shrink back on that. And that's a struggle that a lot of people shrink back on. Those kids need help. Those kids need you. Youth, and I've got all, there's, there's a lot of things that we need. Greeting, what else we got here? Prayer team. Anyway, we, we just go right through the list. And, and I think as I go, I'm going through these things, there's a lot of you right now that are going, it's me. You can say amen or oh me. And most of us are saying oh me, aren't we? And we take these gifts and this is what we do. Well, sorry, God, I know that you paid the price for your son, blood money for those things, but I've got too much going on in my life. And as I said, as worship got over today, Solomon looked at his life and he says, vanity, vanity. My life absolutely means nothing. I pursued my whole life to get wealth and wives and riches and all these kind of things. And when I, my life is done, it means absolutely nothing. Only what I did for Jesus Christ is going to matter. And this is what God wants you to do. He wants you to go explore the island of misfits once again. And he wants you to pull these things out. And he wants you to use these things. And if you leave it in a place like that, okay, King Moon Racer, <laughs> the Lion of Judah is going to come and he's going to get these things and he's going to go, since you're not using these things, here, Troy, why don't I give them to you? He won't use them anymore. Or Laura, here, why don't you take them because she's not using them anymore. Okay, and, and that gift is going to evaporate in your life and that gift is going to be abundance in your life. What do you want your life to mean? Can we pray? Why don't you bow your heads? Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you and I thank you again for the gift of God that has been placed within every single one of us that received Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, God, I thank you that the gift of Jesus Christ has been given to this entire world. Every single person here. So Heavenly Father, I just pray that right now you bring conviction upon anybody here that doesn't know Jesus. And God, for the rest of us that know you, but we've been running from the gifts that you've been given, I pray, God, the conviction of the Holy Spirit will come upon them right now. And I pray, God, that they would be given the unction, God, to stir up their gifts and begin to serve this world, to begin to serve this body in order that it would be a profit for every single person in this place. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for that sacrifice, for that gift that you've given. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.